Friends, here we have the brand new iPad Pro equipped with the M4 processor. In this video, we'll take a look at just how thin the new iPad Pro is. What I'm holding now is the large 13 inch model. Take a look at how astonishingly thin it is at just 5.1 millimeters. It's 1.3 millimeters thinner than the previous generation and is Apple's thinnest product to date. Look at the Apple pencil attached to it. The pencil is even thinner than the tablet itself, which is incredibly slim. The device is also very light. When you take it out, it feels almost unreal, like a low density model. It weighs only 579 grams, which is 103 grams lighter than the previous generation, making its lightness quite remarkable. I strongly encourage everyone to visit a store and experience this lightness and thinness firsthand. However, I'm somewhat concerned that such a thin device could be easily bent, seeming even more fragile than the previous generation. Holding it gives you that impression. This iPad Pro, the larger one, is 13 inches, which is a 0.1 inch increase from the previous generation's 12.9 inches. Yet the bezel width of the screen is nearly unchanged, so its length and width have grown slightly, by 1 millimeter in length and 0.6 millimeters in width, rendering it incompatible with the previous generation's cases and protectors. Now let's look at the smaller 11 inch iPad Pro, which is also incredibly slim with a thickness of 5.3 millimeters, just a tad thicker than the 13 inch model, but still 0.6 millimeters thinner than the previous generation's 11 inch iPad Pro. It also reduced its weight by 22 grams. Strangely, even though its screen size remains the same as the previous generations, the length of the device has slightly increased by about one millimeter. This means that its cases and protectors are no longer compatible with those of the previous generation. Apart from dimensional changes, the new iPad Pro's color for space gray has been altered to match the deep black of the M3 MacBook Pro. Looking a bit more profound than before, the silver iPad Pro remains the same as the previous generation's silver shade. As for the camera module, the M4 iPad Pro has undergone changes, shifting from a dual to a single main camera, eliminating the so-called abstract camera that wasn't particularly useful, Apple. They've realized that no one uses an iPad Pro to take photos, so the Superbird is utterly useless. As for the radar, it's been moved to where the previous ultra-wide camera was, with a new sensor added to the top right corner. This new sensor, according to the staff on site, is for conveying true tone display, which previously wasn't part of the rear camera module. Moreover, the entire module is now colored to match the body. For instance, a space black device will have a matte space black module, unlike the previous generation where the module was glossy black regardless of the body color. Hence, you can distinctly identify the new iPad Pro from the old one by the differences in the rear design. Moving to the front, the new iPad Pro's front camera is now centered, just like the 10th generation iPad, which is convenient for video conferencing or online classes when in landscape mode, ensuring your gaze stays centered. Furthermore, both sizes of the new iPad Pro now feature a brand new OLED screen. Both sizes of the iPad Pro use a dual-layer tandem OLED display with identical specs for both, meaning aside from size and battery capacity, there's no difference in specifications between the two Pro models. 11-inch model fans will rejoice. One of the advantages of the OLED screen is its high brightness. The new iPad Pro can achieve a peak SDR brightness of 1000 nits across the entire screen compared to the previous model's 600 nits. When playing HDR content, its peak brightness can reach 1600 nits. As for the new OLED screen's PWM dimming method, we'll compare it to that of the iPhone for reference. Moreover, if you opt for a 1T Dobby or 2T by iPad Pro, you can add nano texture glass for an additional 800 yuan. It features the same matte finish used on the Pro Display XDR and offers superior anti-reflective properties, helping to reduce glare. In addition, I strongly recommend not applying any screen protector on this nano texture glass version, whether it's clear or matte paper-like films as it negates the anti-reflective benefits, making the extra cost pointless. As for the chip, the latest iPad Pro has leapfrogged the M3 to be equipped with the new M4 chip. It features a second generation three nanometer process, offering rendering performance that's four times faster than the previous M2 generation, and a CPU that's 1.5 times faster. How does it actually perform? We'll fully evaluate this once we get our hands on the real device and produce an in-depth review video. Additionally, Apple's official website no longer uses geographical regions to differentiate iPads, but uses chips instead, much like MacBooks. For example, this generation's iPad Pro is called the iPad Pro M4, while this generation's iPad Air is called the iPad Air M2. Alongside the iPad Pro update, there's also the brand new Magic Keyboard, which currently only fits the new iPad Pro and isn't compatible with other models. It's available in black and white, and I must say I prefer the white one, even though it gets dirty. The white Magic Keyboard I'm using now has become quite soiled and can't be cleaned. The new Magic Keyboard has added a row of function keys at the top for quick adjustment screen brightness and volume control. There's also a button in the top right for instantly locking the screen. The new keyboard features an aluminum palm rest, which feels much better than the previous silicon material, although the front and back surfaces are still made of silicon. 
They've also introduced pressure-sensitive touch feedback. It no longer clicks down physically like the previous generation. Instead, it works similarly to the MacBook's trackpad with full pressure sensitivity. The experience of using this trackpad is almost identical to that of a MacBook, which represents a significant improvement over the previous model. All right, let's look at the new Apple Pencil Pro. The Pro in Apple Pencil Pro comes from several new features, such as additional sensors. There's a new pressure sensor. You can squeeze the pencil to bring up a menu for changing the color of your strokes. And while squeezing, the pencil provides vibratory feedback. Back. The second new sensor is a gyroscope, which allows you to change the virtual brush shape and direction, just like tilting an actual brush. When I rotate the Apple Pencil Pro like this, you can see the virtual brush rotate with it, and the response is very swift. Of course, it still supports the hover preview function and double tap operation switching, which were available in the second generation Apple Pencil. The third update, the Apple Pencil Pro now supports... I can't find the pen after looking it up. For example, if you throw it in the seam of this sofa, you can also find out where the pen is through this search. What about this Apple Pencil Pro? Its socket method is actually more like a MagSafe card bag. The insertion method is that it can only record the position where the Apple Pencil was attached to the iPad last time. It can only record this position. It does not have a chip inside, and there is no UWB chip to support an accurate search. This is not good. Uh, it is a little pity. I think the Pro, which Apple sent, is still... It is only suitable for the M2 iPad Air released yesterday and the old iPad Pro of the M4, which is not supported. The old model only supports the second generation Apple Pencil. Another point that everyone needs to pay attention to is that the cellular network version of the iPad Pro this time no longer supports physical Steam cards and there is no physical Steam card slot. The 10th generation iPad has both physical SIM cards and eSIM. It is supported, but the iPad Pro only supports eSIM. At present, in China, only China Unicom can use it. Finally, there is another point that the new iPad Pro is not universal with the old accessories at all. Whether it is shell film, whether it's the Apple Pencil or Magic Keyboard, you'll need to purchase them new as the old versions won't work with these. Thus, the cost is on the higher side. Regarding price, the M4 iPad Pro launches with a memory increase from 128GB to 256GB. The 11-inch iPad Pro is priced from 8,999 yuan, and the 13-inch version starts at 11,499 yuan. The Apple Pencil Pro is priced at 999, the 11-inch keyboard at 2399, and the 13-inch keyboard at 2799. Curious about your opinion on the new iPad Pro, considering its price and capabilities. Would you consider acquiring this new model? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, support us with a like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.